Here is a puzzle that was posted in Mensa Mumbai's uh, SIG, that is Special Interest Group, uh, on WhatsApp. And the puzzle goes something like this. Uh, we have been given an arrow, which consists of this upper triangle, the arrow head, and this lower trapezium kind of shape. Uh, you can call it the arrow stem. And we are supposed to use four such arrows to create five of them. So from the problem statement itself, it is clear that we'll be using four copies of these arrows. Of course, we'll be allowed to uh, simply copy them, like uh, translation, or maybe rotate them, mirror them, uh, you know, operations like that. And we'll be arranging these four copies so that the fifth arrow will kind of emerge out of them. So we are expecting four solid arrows surrounding a central void, which will be the shape of the fifth arrow. So you can pause the video here. Uh, if you want to try uh, on your own. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and look at the solution. Okay, so let's start solving this problem. For that, we'll be making a copy of uh, the given arrow over here. And then when we look at this part, the arrow stem, we realize this is a commonly used shape. It's called the dovetail. Uh, dovetails are seen in many places like you know furniture and machines uh, and they are used because they fit nicely into each other in fact if you look closely over here you already see a part of the dovetail at least that is emerging in this void and that gives us a clue of what needs to be done we need to take this arrow invert it on its head so that the copies dovetail fits here so let's do that we'll select this arrow We'll make a copy of this, of course, a rotated copy. So we'll rotate it like this by 180 degrees and place it there. And the dovetails are, you know, nicely fitting here. Uh, you might have guessed what needs to be done next. Uh, here is a sloping side, just like this one here. So we can either copy it here or we can do the rotation once again, like this. And that is our third one. The fourth one uh, is emerging over here. See this sloping line? So let's make use of that. And finally, uh, we'll be taking this one here and uh, we'll be rotating it without making a copy, of course, because we have already used up four arrows. And if you do this, well, there is our fifth arrow. So all we really need to do is take this original arrow, copy it here, and then make one more copy exactly next to that and make two more copies that join like this. So it is a simple translational copy uh, arranged like this that gives us the fifth arrowhead. Next, we are going to look at uh, what are the constraints here? What are the proportions, dimensions of these dovetails, these arrows, and uh, what kind of variations uh, we can do and still have a similar solution? To understand this solution better, uh, let us spread these arrows into their essential parts. For that, we'll draw a few lines. Uh, they are all parallel lines. And they separate these arrows into arrow heads and arrow stems. So now we are having kind of patterns. So there is a pattern of triangles here. Of course, one is solid and a void, solid and a void, and so on. And a band of trapeziums. Again, solid and a void, solid and void. But they are all identical. So there is a band of patterns here and a band of patterns here. So if we now look at these two patterns separately, we realize their relative dimensions. So here, uh, the gap between uh, this triangular base and the top of the trapezium must be half of the base of the trapezium because two of these gaps are forming a single base. So let's uh, check their dimensions and they indeed turn out to be, so this is 1.5 and this is three. One is two. Now let us think of the variation that we can do in this puzzle to make it a little more complicated than it is. So we can select these and shift them by some random amount, okay, over here. Now let us see if the puzzle solution is still working. For that, I'm going to select one arrowhead. Uh, let's mirror that upside down like this, and then move it to check whether it fits in this gap or not. It fits beautifully. So the solution is still working in spite of the asymmetry that we have introduced. Now this puzzle that we just did belongs to a very beautiful part of mathematics where people study symmetry and patterns. 
and uh, you can really take and create you know complicated shapes like these and create patterns out of them so here is a pattern formed by this shape very random looking shape but there is no gap left uh, neither is there any overlap and within these shapes you can start seeing you know animals and trees and things and uh, you can really get creative with it so here is uh, something that I saw in the shape and uh, then I had a whole pattern of those. If you really want to see uh, this art uh, taken to mind-blowing height, go to Wikipedia or the net and look for M.C. Escher. So here is an image from uh, Wikipedia uh, from M.C. Escher where you can see lizards here and they're beautifully fitting into each other, no gaps, no overlaps. And his work is full of these. Uh, thank you for watching.